Previously on the bill. The mess fights kicked off. Doug Wright's been stabbed in the stomach. Another hand comes in with a weapon and stabs him. Well, who's the other guy? It was this bloke. He was wearing a blue top. Today I was unlucky. Next time I'll finish the job. Oh my god. from the hospital. Sergeant Doug Wright, how's he doing? As well as could be expected for a man who's just been stabbed and had his spleen removed. And what about forensics? Anything from the note that was delivered to Doug at the hospital? Nothing yet, sir. What about the list of suspects he named? Well, uniform and CID are picking them up as we speak. Hello, Pete. Sergeant Doug Wright. You remember him? Phil Kingston, we need to speak to you about the stabbing of Sergeant Doug Wright. Any luck with your suspects? Nothing. My fellow boys check out. We found the weapon, though. Good. Where was that? On top of a bus shelter, about 50 yards away from the pub where Doug was stabbed. Someone passing on a double decker bus spotted it. Not the best hiding place in the world. Well, maybe they panicked. Anyway, we've sent it to forensics for uh, fingerprinting and DNA. Apparently, it's a serrated edge knife with some sort of Chinese lettering, so maybe it's a martial arts weapon. Well, that's all we need. A ninja warrior. Are you sure you should be here and not looking after Doug? No, I'm more use here. I'm a worse nurse than he is a patient. We need to get everyone out on the streets. We've got to catch the scumbag that did this. Well, I'm not sure. There is an argument for lying low. I don't want to put any officers at risk unnecessarily. Well, how would that be at risk? I mean, it was Doug he was after. Doug was the one stabbed. He even addressed the note to Doug and delivered it to the hospital. But it didn't say that Doug was the target. Yes, but he did say that next time he would finish the job. Until we know who he is and why he attacked Doug, as far as I'm concerned, everyone's at risk. Well, I still don't think we should run and hide. We are not running and hiding. Look, we need to send out a signal. He wins if we stop doing what we do. He also wins if an officer gets killed. OK, let's make it business as usual, but with precautions. Can't wait to get out there. No, no, no. I want you here. We've got two newcomers today. I need you giving an eye on them. There's a lunatic out there who stabbed my husband. Well, and you want me to puppy walk? Yeah. Do you have a problem with that? No. Mum. You're a virgin as well? <laughs> Not unless I've just been born again. <laughs> uh, PC Billy Rowan. It's my first day. They said I'd be starting with someone else. Sally Armstrong, but I'm no first timer. I've just done two years at Haringey. Straight out of Hendon, me. Reckon they've forgotten about us? They're probably just busy. What do you say we walk out and protest? <laughs> Look, this is gonna sound a little hasty, but how about a uh, leisurely breakfast, uh, walk in the park, pub lunch, catch an afternoon film, cocktails, dinner, and uh, live happily ever after? What do you think? I'm thinking no, but thank you. You're very forward for a virgin. You're only young once, my love. Excuse me. Well, maybe next time, eh? I'll hold you to that. Sort down looking for All right, come on, listen up. Right, we all know what we're here to talk about, but before we start, can I just say, today, more than anything, safety is paramount. Whoever stabbed Sergeant Doug Wright left a note saying that next time he'd finish the job. We're taking that to mean he'll kill. The note was delivered specifically to Doug at the hospital, but the message could apply to any of us. Which means we've got to be extra careful. And we do need to take this threat seriously. Spicer Street and Barton Street may also be targeted too. So, as of today, this is a team met operation. What have we got so far? Well, Barton Street are interviewing everyone who was in the pub during the attack, and they're carrying out door to door. Forensics may still come up with something from the pub, but it's a long shot. And see, idea of checking if the attacker was someone who bore a grudge. So, so we haven't really got a lot to go on at the moment. Not yet, but we will. Everyone will double up today. Walking units, I want pairs in sight of each other at all times. All calls are to be answered by at least two mobile units and all protective clothing worn. Now, I know that will slow down our operational effectiveness, but it's safety first. Any questions? That's all. Lastly, we have two new members to join our team today. PC Sally Armstrong, who's just finished her probation at Haringey, and PC Billy Rowan, who's looking forward to his very first day in the job. Well, 
probably not the right time to bring it up, but retiring on your first day is not an option, no? <laughs> All right, come on. Welcome to Sunhill, then. Thanks. Looking forward to getting to know you all. Yeah, well, just a little heads up, Inspector. A bit of a dragon. Right. Welcome aboard. Come on. Oh, I Talk about end of the deep end, though. Yeah, suddenly your suggestion of a day out doesn't sound so bad. If it still stands, don't let a psycho get in the way of true love. You too. I want you to stay close to home and get your bearings and stick at all times to Sergeant Wright. Oh, and PC Keen. Mum? Can somebody else do this? Uh, no. It's not a request, PC Keen. It's an order. Thank you. We've drawn a blank with Doug's list of suspects. Do you mind if we have another chat with him? No, of course not. I'll come with you. Uh, PC Rowan, we need to head off to the hospital. Uh, and we're supposed to be staying close to home? Well, we are, ish. Emma, can you show Sally around? We'll catch up with you later. So, where do you want to start? I suppose coffee's out of the question. No, best idea I've heard all day. Still in bed? I don't know. Disgrace, isn't it? Listen, we need to ask you a few questions. Who's this? Inspector Morse? It's PC Billy Rowan. It's his first day. Oh. Nice quiet start for you, Billy boy. I know. Where's the excitement? We've had no joy with your old cronies, I'm afraid. We were hoping you could give us some more names. I can't think. I'm such a likeable fellow. Look, look, there must be someone, Doug. What about that jumped-up student that kept accusing you of harassment? Oh, Mo Benjamin. No, no way. Well, he's not exactly a fan of yours, is he? Or the police. Give me a right math all the other week. Not going to try and kill me, though, is he? You don't know. I can't see it, Summer. Uh, last I heard, he was dealing. All right, we'll check it out if you like, bud. Can you have a of blood, Benjamin? This, um, Benjamin... He didn't have a penchant for martial arts by any chance, did he? We never got round to his hobbies. Bramble House, Banner Estate. Right. Thank you, Doug. Send him my love. Then you two have to be somewhere. No, we're lying low. Been told to take a back seat, seeing as I'm puppy walking round, Barry. Oh. Since when did you ever do as you're told? Here we go. Dear yeah, Nick. Oi! Hang on a minute! Quick, grab him! Grab him! Wait! Stop! Please! Oi! Come here! Terry's gonna jump! Stop! Police! Stop! He's jumped! Right, let's go around the other way and head him off. I see him! Oi! Make it easy on yourself, mate! Stop easy, Mom! Stop struggling! PC Rowan, son ill. You're under arrest for attempted murder. Why did you try to leg it when we came knocking? A copper got attacked. It was on the news. That doesn't answer my question. I figured you'd come to point a finger. And why would we do that? Who do we know who doesn't like cops? Oh, Mo Benjamin doesn't like cops. Let's pin it on him. That right? Well, funny enough, no. Got an interesting record here, Mo. Six months suspended sentence for GBH, two drug offences, caution for an affray, and a charge of violent behaviour against a police officer. That was a fit-up. One of you lot's got it in for me. Oh, yeah? Which one's that? Sergeant Wright. Know him? Where were you yesterday afternoon? Home. Why? Anyone verify that? No. Got a lot of posters and DVDs about martial arts at your flat. Is that something you're into? Yeah. Why? You're against that now, is there? You got any of the kit that goes with it? Any of the weapons? Like what? Like knives? No. Why are you asking me all these questions? That news report about the police officer that was attacked, did they give a name? No. Well, it was your friend. Sergeant Wright. This is a stitch up. Sit down. No, nah, you're trying to pin something on me that I didn't do. No, we're trying to eliminate you from our inquiries. I've had enough of this. Sit down. Please. I'm not saying nothing. This is... It's persecution, this no, is. No, it's not. I think the word that my client might be looking for is harassment. Well, it's the 
let me get this right. Your first ever arrest and it looks like being the guy who stabbed Doug Wright. I hate you. I'd have turned out if I was you, get out while the going's good. We weren't even meant to be there, so, you know, don't make a song and dance about it, you know? <laughs> Bit early for a song and dance about it, isn't it? Where's Sergeant Wright? Um, oh, oh she not didn't sure. Say she was going to Sergeant Wright's interviewing a suspect in connection with the stabbing. Oh, is she now? Trying to cover for your sergeant, were you? Mum. Mum. It's all right, it's very admirable. Nice to see a bit of loyalty around here. You've got no evidence that he stabbed Doug Wright. Your client has got a history with Doug Wright. Your client legged it when we approached him. Your client is into martial arts. Doug Wright was stabbed with a martial arts knife. All circumstantial. CPS will throw it straight out, and you know it. If you don't bail my client right now... Excuse me. I'm Superintendent John Heath. Uh, <laughs> Kerry Malcolm. I can assure you we will follow all the rules. I should hope so. Could I just ask you, do you think Benjamin is the sort to bear a grudge? Yes. Against Doug Wright? Yes. Enough to stab him? No, he's a student with a chip on both shoulders. I see a dozen people like him in my office every week. But like most of them, he's all mouth. Well, she would say that, wouldn't she? Do you know what, PC Perkins? It's DC Perkins. I wouldn't just say that. I defend people who might have been mistreated. I don't protect murderers. Odd though it may seem, we're both on the same side of the law. on to him for another 24 hours. So at the moment we have a suspect with a motive, but we can't establish opportunity. There's nothing to link Benjamin to the pub where Doug was stabbed. And I've got officers going through Doug's head cam footage, the mobile phone footage, and the CCTV of the surrounding area. So far, nothing. Which is why I'm afraid we have to bail him. Well, what about the murder weapon? We've had no prints or DNA back from the lab yet. Well, can't we wait until there is? No. Given Benjamin's history of complaints against the service... Which weren't upheld, sir. We have to do things to the letter, otherwise it could backfire on us. Bail him. But what if he's our man? If we release him, we could be putting an officer's life at risk. We don't have any option. I thought you wanted to catch this guy. Sorry, Nicky. And I thought you were supposed to be puppy walking. All units from Sierra Oscar. Disturbance at a jewellery shop on Gosport Lane. Over. Perfect timing. Come on, check that out. Oh. Pounding the beat at my age. Know what you mean? Listen, gone balls. Do me a favour and let me have the next slice of the glory pie, yeah? What's it worth? <laughs> you making it through your first day? How about a drink after work? I'm not sure it's safe on the streets. I uh, will have caught him by then. Let's just get through our first shift, yeah? <laughs> um, can I lead? Please, be my guest. PC Armstrong, Sunhill. Yes, come in. Talk about sledgehammer to crack a nut. Someone called about a possible theft. I did. This young man has stolen an 18 karat white gold Italian solitaire ring valued at 1500 pounds. Prove it. If I stole it, where is it? In a minute, sir. Go on. He asked specifically to see the ring. I removed it from the tray and handed it to him. I turned away for a split second and he knocked the tray flying. And? And he must have taken it while he was helping me pick them up. But well, haven't you got CCTV? I have checked, but he's bent down and the counter's in the way, so you can't see anything. That's because I was helping you to pick them up. He's lying! So where is it then? How much more is there? It's making my head tap. What are we looking for? I'm looking at CCTV outside the pub where Doug was stabbed. Just keep your eye on that guy there. What guy? The one in the blue top. I mean, what's he hanging around outside the pub for? If one's either inside or going inside. Let's track his movement and see what he's up to. I told you I didn't have it. It's her. She's lost her marbles. She's messed everything up now. And why is that then? It was meant to be a surprise for Gabrielle. I was going to pop the question light, wasn't I? Lucky escape then. Had her heart set on that one, she did. Believe me, as long as it's a diamond, she won't mind. Must remember that. Mm -hmm. So I can go then, yeah? Well, we've got your details. We'll be in touch. So that's it then. You're just going to let him walk out of here scot-free. I don't believe this. I really don't. Um, Jake, one last thing. How regular are you? Not sure what you mean. Sorry, Sarge, we're going to have to take him in. Keep him in custody for as long as it takes. What are you going on about? As long as what takes? Until nature calls. The ring. I think he swallowed it. 
Surely that would take a bit too long, though, wouldn't it? Well, then I suggest that we take Jake here to St Hughes and get a doctor to, uh, how can I put it, get his hands dirty? Or you could just admit it, save yourself a lot of pain and heartache. <sighs> nice one, PC Armstrong. Now, we've already seen this guy hanging around outside the pub before the fight started. This is us arriving and piling in. And in a minute, you'll see him follow us inside. There he goes now. Why well, go into a pub if a fight's kicking off? Do we pick up on him inside the pub? No, there's no available footage, but he doesn't hang around. This is him leaving. As you can see, looking pretty shifty. He was in there for a total of 52 seconds. Quick pint. That's long enough to stab someone. So, what do you think? Not sure. Well, it's got to be something, isn't it? It's hardly conclusive, but... The lab report's back on the murder weapon. The DNA's been confirmed as Doug's and Mo Benjamin's prints all over the knife. Where is he now? We released him about an hour ago. Right, we need to let the superintendent know and then we'll pay Benjamin a visit. Thanks, PC Fletcher. Anything else, let us know. You got something? The knife's got Benjamin's prints all over it. I knew it was him. Do you need backup? No, nope, they don't. Another unit's on its way. How are you doing? Great. Kids has done really well. Good. We've got another one for you. An old cheese factory on Brim Street. You throwing stones at windows. Cheese factory? Really? Really. We've got officers round the back in case there's another ninja moment. Right. He's not going to answer, is he? What do we do? Wait for a warrant? Silly me. For you. Clear. Clear. He's not here, is he? No sign of any kids. No, maybe they legged it already. Oh, we become more like. <laughs> yeah, pride comes with a fall. Sounds like kids mucking around to me. Well, there's only one way to find out. Two of us go in, two of us stay out here. Uh, radio contact at all times. Who wants to come in with me? I will. My turn. Besides, age of four beauty, yeah? Sonny, me. Nothing. Great. No signal. What do we do? I don't know. Something's not right. Let's get out. What is that? Sounds like somebody in trouble. Hello? 
Hello? Hello? Okay. Yeah. Just concentrating on the cop killer being here. That way, he, he won't be. Will that bother me then? It's like when you're a little kid and you think there's a monster under your bed. I'm not sure I want to hear this. But go on. You tell yourself there can't possibly be a monster under the bed because you're imagining that there is one. So the chances of there actually being one there. And you imagine that there's one there at the same time, but it's, it's not going to happen, is it? You mean, the monster's only going to get you when you're not thinking about it? Exactly. So, keep thinking he's going to get you and he won't. He teaches out of Hindu. <laughs> Sergeant Wright from 361, is everything okay in there, over? Sergeant Wright from 361, are you reading me, over? What should we do? Should we go in? She told us to wait out here. Maybe there's poor reception in there. Sierra Oscar from 361, requesting backup to the old cheese factory on Broom Street. We have lost contact with Sergeant Wright, over. went in about 20 minutes ago, told us to wait outside. We've lost radio contact and something must have happened. Okay. Terry, you go inside. Me, PC Valentina, PC Hollis, we're going to check the perimeter. Right. You two come with me. Can anyone help, please? It's all right. What's happened? Get an ambulance, quick! Get an ambulance, come on! Hey! I can't get a pulse. 
It was a trap, we got separated. Which way did he go? Through the fire door. He stopped breathing, what do we do? How long ago did you have a pulse? Five, ten minutes. Ten, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, ten. What the hell's going on in there? There's been another stabbing. Who did he get? Billy Rowan. The new kid? Oh, he saw a lot of blood. Police hurt, he's really hurt. Whoever did this could still be here. You stay with her. I'll go back and check again. Come on, Billy, please. No, get up! I can do it! Come on, it's over, it's over. Come on. No. No. See, Ryan's been murdered. What? What's happened? Oh my God! The cold Brim Street was a trap. <sighs> so it wasn't just a personal vendetta against Doug Ray. Oh, whoever did this doesn't care who he gets. He's running rings around us. Benjamin. What? Benjamin? Yes, Mo Benjamin. Yeah, he could have gone to the factory straight from here. Get a tape of the call out to the factory, see if we can identify the caller. And get Uniform back to his estate. We need to track him down. So. Sarge, did you see anyone? I caught a glimpse. Can you give a description? Anything distinctive, unusual? I, no, I, no, I don't think so. He killed Billy Rowan. I know, Sarge. I think we'd better get you to hospital. No, I'm fine. I'm staying. I'm not going anywhere. And I'm not taking no for an answer. You're in shock. I need to get you checked out. Right, folks, stand back, please. Let the emergency services do their work. Right back to the tape, please. Please step back now. Thank you. Can you step back, please? Is anyone injured? There's nothing to see, mate. Is there already, are they? Vultures. I heard a police officer got stabbed. Shame. <laughs> Excuse me, you with the camera. Can I just take a look at what you're just filming, please? Thank you. No sign of Benjamin. You? No, but the neighbour reckons they saw him about 20 minutes ago. He's got a garage across the forecourt and the number's the same as his flat. Excuse me. You okay? Yes, thank you, Mum. If you want to go home. No, I want to stay here and help catch him. Basically, what happened? I've heard that you two were out here and Billy and Nikki were inside. That's right, Mum. But you were ordered to stay together. We thought it was safest and best to split up. I thought about going in when we lost radio contact. And why didn't you? Well, I radioed for backup. We were already separated. There was no point in me and PC Armstrong going in alone. Uh, if you talk to her, I'm sure she'd say the same thing. Mm, she's too upset. We're all upset, Mom. Or is she receiving special treatment? I treat all my officers the same. Thank you very much. The point is, you should never have been apart. I assure you, Mom. I acted in a professional and responsible manner. Sergeant Wright made the decision, and I respected her orders. I did what I was told. Is there a back exit? No, one way in, one way out. All right, okay, ready? Yeah. Put it down now! Stop it! Right, stand there, get your hands up. Don't you move. Stand here. Come on, mate, you ain't gonna fight back. Nothing. Man, come on. Dan, where were you between being bailed and rearrested? Walking. Walking where? I needed some air. Where? Local, around the estate. You lot freaked me out this morning. <laughs> 
Produce some evidence and my client's out of here. You recognise this knife? I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said. I know what it is, if that's what you mean. You like a bit of martial arts, don't you? Although you told us earlier that you didn't own any weapons. You got anything like this in your little arsenal? No. Now, why do I find that hard to believe? This knife was used to stab Sergeant Wright yesterday. What's that got to do with my client? It's not my knife. How come your prints are all over it? Okay, it's mine. It must have been stolen. Someone must have broken and took it. Do we look like mugs to you? It's the truth, I swear. Tell them. I want to speak to my solicitor. Alone. Far away. This was taken by a journalist outside the factory where Billy was killed. Now, I thought this guy was acting strangely. Something about the questions he was asking and the fact that he knew a copper had been injured. How? The same guy was seen yesterday at the Grand Duke. So he was at the scene of both attacks? Could be a coincidence. No such thing. But if this is our man, what about Mo Benjamin? His prints are all over the murder weapon. Well, the killer's smart, isn't he? What if somebody nicked the knife and framed Benjamin? My client would like to make a confession. It's about the weapons. The weapons? I import them illegally from the Far East and sell them on over here. So what's your point? I have a handler over here who's connected to one of the triads. And I was with him yesterday at the time of the stabbing in a club he owns called Octane. You'll get that on CCTV. So my client has an alibi for the attempted murder of Sergeant Wright. Yeah, we'll have to check it out, won't we? And I was back there after I was bailed this morning. I was meant to deliver some stock earlier, but you lot slowed me down. And I had to go and smooth things over. Therefore, my client can also provide an alibi for the murder of PC Rowan. Why the hell didn't you tell us this before? I didn't want to grasp my handler. But it's better than being done for murder. You're yeah, okay. What do you think? Uh, we have to get him. Yeah. It wasn't your fault. How'd you figure that? You went to know it was a trap. You're not responsible for the actions of a murderer. I was the one who wanted the relief out on the streets. I was the one in charge of puppy walking Billy Rowan. I led him into a trap. Could have been any one of us. I was responsible for Billy. He was killed on my shift. And I hate myself for it. Oh, you've been to the Octane Club, looked at the CCTV, and your story checks out. Thing is, that brings us right back to square one again, doesn't it? Not my problem, mate. I told you all I know. Can I go? Sure. As far as a custody desk, we're charging you with importing illegal goods. Great. Tell me something. Who do you think will want to frame you? One of your triad mates? Don't see why. You know this geezer? Yeah, I know. Well, who is it then? I don't know his name. I met him at Kerry's practice. At Kerry's? Yeah, we got talking. Apparently, you lot are responsible for the death of his daughter. Is that right? What's he got against me? I was going to ask you the same question. Does he know you're into weapons? Yeah. We got talking about ways of getting back at the police. And I said I had a collection of knives. Charming. Take him down, will you? You're like a bad penny, you are. People are going to start talking soon. It's a guy I want to talk to. You know him? It's Greg Farnham. Your client of yours? Used to be. We parted company when he lost an appeal against you lot for negligence. I wish you told me that, Kerry. <sighs> I was to tell you the name of every person who came into this office with a grudge against the police. We would both be here until doomsday. Something to do with his daughter, wasn't it? Debbie. She was shot dead in broad daylight by her ex. 
both Mr. Farnham and his daughter warned the police on numerous occasions that the ex was dangerous. No one listened. He thinks that the police were directly responsible. When was this? About two years ago, maybe more, excuse me. The Police Complaints Commission held against him nine months ago, which is when he left me and took the case to the European Court of Human Rights. The EU threw it out about two weeks ago. Maybe that's the trigger. Mo said they started talking. Well, that figures. Mo can't even hold his own water. You got an address? Of course. He was a client. And can I have it? No. Client confidentiality. Former client. He's already killed one police officer and attacked another. You were pretty convinced a minute ago that Mo was responsible. Mr. Farnham is innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, and the dead officer, PC Billy Rowan, was 22 years old. Come on, Kerry, I thought we were on the same side. I'll get it for you. Thank you. Mind if we knock this time? If you insist. Reg? No answer. I doubt he's going to make it easy for us. Go on. Thank you. I'm trying to run out now, are you, Mr. Farnham? Why would I do that? Search him and get him in the car. Hands out your pockets. Hands out your pockets. Face the wall. What do you reckon, Reg? Well, he's dedicated, I'll give you that. Obsessed more than I. He should get out more. Obsessed he might be. It's stupid he's not. How do you get over the pain of losing someone like that and then inflict the same pain on someone else? Raj, you go to Sunday school. What do you think? Why? Well, I did. Whatever hers he's done, you shall give a life for a life, a tooth for a tooth. An eye for an eye. Hope he rocks in her. Greg Farnham, look at him. Couldn't care less. God. Attempted murder and murder. He killed Billy and I meant to say nothing. Nothing you can do or say is going to bring Billy back, is it? I think it will make me feel better, but. Well. Mr. Farnham. Can I confirm you're waiving your right to a solicitor? I am. Is that because you want to confess the attempted murder of Sergeant Doug Wright and the murder of PC Billy Rowan? No. They're overrated lawyers. Hmm. We ran some checks, Mr. Farnham. You're an electrical engineer. Married once to Helen. She died seven years ago. Is that right? Is this a quiz? You had only one child. A daughter by the name of Debbie. She was murdered just over two and a half years ago. Do you want to tell us about that? No, I don't. Must be very hard for you, losing the two people closest to you. You learn to cope. You know my Benjamin? No. That's interesting. He knows you. My memory for names is not what it once was. Is that right? What about places? Where were you this morning between 11 and 12? Outside an old factory on Broom Street. What were you doing there? Taking in the sights. What about the Grand Duke pub? I've been in there once or twice. Yes, you have, haven't you? We have photographic evidence of you there and at the factory on Brim Street, both places where police officers have been attacked. We also have the recording of a man's voice who rang in to report a false incident at the factory. And we've got his mobile number. And obviously we have your voice on the tape recording of this interview which means we can do voice analysis to ascertain whether they're one and the same person. You bothered at all by that? Why would I be? As my colleague pointed out, your daughter was murdered, wasn't she? By her ex-boyfriend. He's now in a psychiatric unit. She was shot at point blank range, I believe, is that right? Yeah, if you must know, yeah, she was shot four times in the head. And yes, it was at point blank range. The last words she heard on this earth were, Die, bitch, after spending the last minutes of her life begging 
not to be killed. Oh, it's all right, officer. I don't want to talk about it. But I can if I have to. Oh, they've got someone. Greg Farnham. I've never heard of him. Lost his daughter and blames her death on the police. They're convinced it's him. What have they got in him? Not a lot. Oh, what they really need is a positive ID. Well, can you give one? Can you identify him? You know I can't. I saw someone at the factory, but they were a blur. Positive identification would nail him. Can't give a positive ID. Can you? Sure. Think about it. You saw him? What was he wearing? Anything distinctive about his face? Look, you don't get it, do you? I can't identify him because I didn't see him. This photograph will be up all over the station. Take you five minutes to check him out. What? Think of Billy. Think of me. But what if it isn't Greg Farnham? What if it is? How are you going to feel if he walks? Then you're the only one that could have had him sent down. You don't think much of us, do you? You have a job to do. As long as you do it. But we didn't do our jobs, did we? Not when it came to your daughter. Is that it? This is all about revenge, isn't it? Then you needed a scapegoat, someone you could frame for murdering a copper. What's Mo Benjamin done to offend you? I can answer that. Mo Benjamin was given a six-month suspended sentence for GBH. He slashed his ex-girlfriend across the face with a knife. Did he tell you that at the lawyer's office? I've no idea what you're talking about. Did you or did you not take the opportunity during a fight at the Grand Duke pub to follow Sergeant Wright in and stab him? With a knife stolen from Mo Benjamin's lockup. Which you then dumped on the top of a bus stop, right near the scene of the crime, knowing full well it would be found and covered in his fingerprints. But you're still not happy, are you? Because you didn't get to kill anyone. So, you lure police officers to a deserted factory, you isolate one of them and stab him to death. Bottom line, Mr. Farnham, you're gonna lose, like you lost your court cases. How does it feel to be a loser? You tell me. You're the ones who are full of theories with no evidence to back them up. Oh, we've explained You it. forget. These last two years, I've grown quite accustomed to court cases, law courts. Everything you've mentioned is circumstantial. Or am I wrong? You see, you're hoping I'm going to confess. You're hoping I can be wound up to spill my guts. Well, do you know what? If you put a gun to my head, you'd have to blow my brains out first. Frustrating, isn't it? Greg Farnham's trying to make fools out of us as revenge for what happened to his daughter. Now, he knows we're desperate to get him, but he's confident we won't be able to gather sufficient evidence to put a case to the CBS. And he's right, isn't he? Well, we have to give him eight hours sleep now. How much longer can we hold him in the morning? Well, a couple of hours, maximum. We need something else. We need it fast. Yeah. Something I can do? No, thank you. Me and Billy were meant to be going for a drink. Then we're going to live happily ever after. Why don't you take some time off? Come on, think about it. it. Won't be a problem. Does that apply to all of us? Well, no. PC Armstrong's only just got here. Her circumstances are slightly different. Yeah, of course they are. Don't worry, Mum. I'll be in tomorrow. Yeah. You think there's a monster? 
time on the bill i owe it to pc rowan i owe it to his mum. i want him caught we're doing this for billy and doug in your position i'd do exactly the same thing i will find out who killed billy rowan in fact i won't rest until i do you'll make sure it pays won't you i'll make sure